a swimmer. How do I know if she's talented? You know, how do I know if she's going to be good? Yeah, thanks. It's uh, another good question on, on talent. So the question is around kids and talent. I want to throw up a model for you to think about parents with this. First of all, sad to say, for those of you that have got a really precocious talent, if you've got a superstar eight or nine year old, there is no such thing as an elite eight year old. A high performance 10 year old or a professional 11 year old, it doesn't happen. It just does, it's, it's not in my vocabulary, please get it out of yours. My job from 1992 to the 2000 Olympics was to go around Australia and try and find and identify talented athletes, pull them into a high performance program and help to get the best out of them for the 2000 Olympics. And in spite of that, and trained as a physiologist, I can't tell you what your eight year old's gonna do. I have no idea. I can't even tell you what sport they're gonna end up in. This year's basketball player is next year's footballer, is next year's butterfly swimmer, is next year's, we don't know. We don't know. But I promise you, specialising them too early is a road to doom. It's a road to doom, particularly with young kids. Not only that, don't worship physical talent. Physical talent is a poor indicator of long-term success. Don't be overwhelmed by the 11-year-old that's up against your 11-year-old. Don't be overwhelmed by that. And not only that, if that's your 11-year-old, don't get too excited about it. Take time to build character and values and virtues and integrity and respect and discipline and all the things as a human being that we know will underpin their success in the long term. I'm going to tell you something again that might unsettle some of you. But if you come up to me and say, Wayne, you don't understand, my child is 10 and they are without doubt the best rugby player this country has ever seen at 10, I'll feel sorry for your child. I really will. Because to me, I'd almost bet my own life that that child will never play rugby for this country. Unlikely they'll ever play for the school, certainly never play for the Blues. That's how strongly I feel about early talent that's not tempered by the right environment and built to last the time. The model that I use, parents, is this one. Imagine that talent and one other important factor to me will determine long-term success and the capacity of your child to realise the potential. It's this word, commitment. Commitment to me is the defining quality in anyone striving to be the best. I'll talk about that in a moment. Athletes that have no talent and have zero commitment, I don't see them because I work mainly with performance athletes. And most of them, unfortunately and sadly, won't be involved in competitive sports. If they have no talent and they don't want to be there anyway, it's unlikely they're going to go too far down the competitive pathway. Up here, the super talent, the big, strong, powerful, agile, good decision maker, great problem solver, the really brilliant, physically gifted athlete who has outstanding, uncompromising commitment to do whatever it takes to be successful. I've seen four or five in 25 years. Four or five, if you think they're sitting at your breakfast table, you've been, you just love them a lot. But the only rugby player I've ever seen who falls in that category in my own personal experience is George Gregan. I had a chance to work with him at the Brumbies and with the Wallabies, and he had the total package. Tremendous leadership, discipline, respect, humility, hard work, natural talent, exceptional. And Michael Phelps, who I'll talk about in a moment. In this box, and this is the most important part of this little session bit, the hardest athletes to deal with and the ones that break your heart as a coach, and the ones that take up the most of our time are those ones. You know those kids, and we all grew up with them. 
and you go, this kid could be anything. Oh my, have you seen what they can do? They don't train, they turn up late and they can score from anywhere. They've had next to no training, but look what they're capable of doing. And they could be anything. But then you see they turn up late, they're never wearing the right gear, they've never got a water bottle, they have no respect for anyone, they're giving cheek, they talk back all the way through. And you think, if we could change this, if we could turn them around, if only they trained like this little kid over here is always here and gives their heart and soul to their sport. If only they were like that, they could be anything. And parents, if you're dealing with one of those, sadly, the kids that people believe could be anything, in sporting terms, most of the time end up doing nothing. Those precocious talents who got there easy, who don't have an attitude of commitment and hard work and passion and who just want to be there, rarely, rarely if ever, achieve the success that you think that they might. I got a really sad story on the Gold Coast. A mum that I know, three boys. And the stories are identical. Super talent, 10, 11, 12 years of age, national champions, not even swimming at 15. The three boys, four years apart, exactly the same pattern. Big kids, strong kids, powerful kids, but undisciplined, poor attitude, disrespectful, late, bullies, no character, no value, no quality other than this great physical ability. And it happened with the oldest boy and they didn't see it. And it happened with the second boy and they still couldn't see it. And the third one has just given up swimming after winning four national titles. It's heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking to see it. Don't worship physical talent. Believe it or not, the majority of athletes I work with, even at professional level, are not untalented. They've got some talent but they're just driven and passionate and committed. 